Okay, so here we are on the M18. We've got the accessories mounted to the top of the engine. And now we're working our way out from there. So the next step is going to be to install the stator and then the flywheel and then the ignition module. And that's what we're going to do. So I've already tested these components. Well, I tested them last year or two years ago, however long it was since I've been here. I think it's a year and a half, almost two years. But I'm going to double check the resistance values before we bolt everything together. So the stator, uh, the main lead, the main two leads coming out the back of the stator go here. I looked and according to the Kohler service manual, this is about how the wiring runs. It runs out the back here and goes up this way. And that's, like memory wise is about how this looks like it went. I didn't see any securing methods for holding this cable anywhere between here and here. That doesn't mean they don't exist, but I didn't see them on this engine anywhere, and I didn't see it noted in the service manual, so. So I've got it piloted on the, on the hub here. I'm going to double check the resistance of the... Uh, the AC leads on the stator. So if you look at the end of the plug here where it goes into the voltage regulator, you've got three leads. You've got AC, AC, and then this is DC out in the middle. So we're going to check between the two leads here. That's basically checking this winding to make sure it's intact. Let's turn it back to auto range. Okay, so we should be between 0 0.064 and 0.2. And we're showing about 0.1 right now. So we are in spec. We're kind of right in the middle. We'll check it again. Yeah, it looked pretty good. So it says when I tested it in 2020, I put in a little note on here, it was at 0 0.10 then too. Eh, we got a little bit of, it's coming up a little bit. So it's not an open circuit and that's a good thing. Double check the meter, make sure it's not doing something weird. Let it sit there and equalize. Yep, so we look pretty good. I think might be some black paint there. Yeah, there's a little bit of black paint there. All right, it's being a little funky. So that looks okay. And then once we have it bolted to the engine block, we'll check to ground to make sure none of those leads connect back to ground anywhere. That'll make sure that none of these windings are touching the inner ring. Careful, these are self-tappers, so they're not... Uh, the threading is not great, just be careful with them.
Come on. That's good. That's not going anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and put the flywheel on. Oh, wait. Before we do that, let's check the we'll check the ground to make sure nothing nothing's touching. Uh, nothing's touching here. Nothing's touching there. Meters. Still doing this thing. Okay, so I've got this section of wiring that comes out to the voltage regulator, which ends up being in the shroud, like out here. Uh, and then the engine connector here that has the kill wire and the battery positive and the oil pressure uh, unit is out here. I'm not quite sure where this is going to clamp in yet, but we're just going to leave it there for now. Let's get the flywheel on um, to make sure that the um, the crankshaft is free of any lubricant. You just want to assemble this dry. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's the keyway. Make sure there's no burrs or anything weird on it. And I'm going to hoist it on there and be very careful not to have any of these magnets grind into the uh, the posts on the stator. So you kind of got to self-center it. By self-center, I mean you center it. I'm going to look down here, make sure the keyway is lined up. Stop making noises, just go in. There we go. Watch out for that. Oh, that was a little crunchy there. Let's pop that back off. Make sure it's. Yeah. I heard a little crunchy right there. And it's pretty tight fit, so. Let's, um, I'm gonna get a little file and take some of the burrs off of that so it's a little easier to get in there. Just cleaning it up a little. That should help a little bit. Chamfer the edge a little. I'm gonna run down through here. This flywheel has been sitting for like a year or two, so make sure it doesn't have anything in it. Oh, that all looks good. All right, let's try that again. Yeah. 
There we go. All right. I'm sure there's no crunchies going on. Sounds good. On my Cub Cadet 1882, uh, I've got an adapter for the drive shaft. Looks like this. And uh, whoop, the washer for the flywheel goes into this cup here. And then there's a locating pin that goes here. Yours may vary. Okay, let's go run that down and then we'll torque it. Is that a 9 16 Yeah. And we are going to torque this to 40 foot-pounds. I should say we're going to attempt to torque it to that. Might have to do something to hold this flywheel. 40, 40 foot pounds is a, a little bit of force. Let's see if I can get a get something in here to. No, that won't work. There we go. Come on, girl. There we go. All right, it's on there now. And this engine just got a lot heavier. That is a pretty beefy flywheel. Okay, the flywheel is now on. Let's get the little dudes on here. There's a screen. screens there's this one or there's the actual uh, fan and then a screen I guess not two screens oh, okay you got a little opening here that goes around the magnet and then they got little shoulder washers so that they help pilot that these are a little rusty so I'm gonna give them Wow, the engine's actually cleaner than this fan that's been sitting around for a year. That's, that's pretty sweet. Oh, it's Needs to move a little. There it goes. Yeah, we'll let them all float until they're all in.
I always like to go back around by hand. Just get a feel for how tight this stuff actually is. Impacts are really nice for being quick, but you can lose that tactile sense. Okay, uh, then this just snaps on, I believe. Yep. Like that. Okay, so that's complete. The next thing is going to be the ignition module, or coil, whatever you want to call it. So here we've got the magnet. This is where the coil will mount. If you've taken this bracket off, it does have an orientation. A little arrow on there, it says in the service manual, manual which way that's supposed to go. Pretty clear the way the wiring went on this one, right? That's just the memory for the wiring, so. And I suppose, you can, can you even mount it wrong? I mean, no. No, you can't even mount them wrong, okay. So let's rotate the magnet away from it right now. That engine's got some compression, man. It does not want to move. Just loosen up the spark plugs. There we go. Easier to move now. And before we go too far, let's uh, double check our resistance on these leads here. So you want to check the secondary uh, resistance, the secondary part of the coil, which is the high voltage side, the high tension side. And for that, we're looking for uh, 22,000 to 42,000 ohms. And we're getting 28 kilo ohms, so that's 28,000 ohms. So we're right in the spec. It's just fine right now. I never had a problem with it before, so we will see. It's the original coil. We can test spark after we get it bolted up, too. Uh, the air gap for the coil is supposed to be 8 to 12 now. Oh, sorry. So roughly 10 thou is where it wants to be. So I'm going to use the uh, business card method and then we'll double check it. I've actually never tested this method to see how accurate it is. It's just usually what I do. On ones that I know that are touchy, I'll actually use feeler gauges. But So I've rotated the magnet so that it's pulling the coil in towards the flywheel and pretty much just centering the magnet right there so it's got the coil in and then pushing in here so I'm pushing this way and the magnets pulling that way and then the gap is being determined by the business card that's in there
Okay, let's see what we get. Okay. So it should be 8 to 12. Yes. Come on, girl. Let's see what we got. I'm probably going to get my other set. So this is a 10 to 12. A 10? A 10 says no, I think. Yeah, 10 says no way. Okay. Let's try our 8. This is an 8 to 10. Yeah, we might be... Yeah, we might be eight. Or a tight eight. Let's see what the bottom is. Yeah. Well, we're about, so this is an eight to 10. And uh, we're about eight, nine, on the bottom there. Check this over here. Okay, so that's an eight. Mm, you can loosen that up a little bit, huh? Come back here. There's an eight, and then I go further. Oh, let's just run it in like this. So that's a ten. Let me get my other set of feeler gauges that's not stepped. We'll just set it for ten. So yeah, it looks like business card sets it between eight and ten, which is fine. Would work just fine, but we can we can be more exact on this one. It won't hurt it. I think when I was getting a real tight measurement, this uh, one section of the the one lamination here was peeled out a little bit. So so here is a ten thou. Here, will that fit the whole length? Yeah, maybe. There's ten there, and um, let's see if I can pull it through there. No. Well, there we go. We're right through that one. We're not quite in the bottom. Come on. There we go. Get in there. Ha. Now it's got it pinched, the whole thing. So that should be pretty damn close to 10 thou all around. Make sure that magnet's centered. Ouch. My fingy. Nope. Oh. So now I've got 10 thou squished in there. So I've got the feeler gauge running all the way down to the bottom here. And now it's pushed up against the magnet, so we'll tighten it. And it's gonna move a little bit, but it shouldn't move much. And that should be our Be our ticket. Nice and tight. Nice and tight. And we'll slide this up out of there. All right. The 
hitting that one. Eh, kind of sounds like it's hitting it a little bit. Let me see what we got. Yeah, it tightened up. That's a little too tight. Business card it is. Business card put it better than this did. All that messing around. And uh, we're just going to use the business card. Where'd it go? I'll probably use this one a few too many times, but that's all right. go all right it's centered on there now i believe no nope. yeah oh, i see what happens is it rotates when it goes in so it changes it a little bit See if we got any noise. Huh? I think we're good. I hear it a little bit, but I don't think it's a big deal. Okay, yeah, I think we're good. So, now we have an engine ready for something. What, maybe shrouds? I think we'll do the shrouds next. I didn't want to do them, but... Oh, the starter. Yeah, that's right. Let me get the starter in. All right, we'll come back. We're going to put the starter in and then put the shrouds on, and then it's almost happy fun times. I forgot something on the... Uh, magneto slash ignition coil module. I did not hook up this white wire. So I'm doing this after the fact, but uh, only because I forgot. <laughs> this is not the way it would go together. So you can see now that I've got the shrouds hooked up to this thing and, uh, and to pull the shroud off because I forgot to put the kill wire on. And I looked at this and I was like, oh, well, you know, well, that wire is the yellow wire for kill. So that's just going to go up to the engine. Well, if it's not connected to the coil, you're not going to be able to kill the spark. So make sure you hook this up. And if you look at the grommet, the factory grommet has basically three holes. Two for the spark plug wires and one for the, uh, for the kill wire. So there it is. Don't forget it like I did. And that'll do it.